Hello, everyone. Welcome back. Chapter two: Traffic and Environment. As mentioned in Chapter one, the main contents of this online course are TM plus 3D. This chapter will study T and E. T is traffic, while E is environment. The main contents are divided into three parts. Okay, let's start from part one. Traffic this. In all to consist vehicle loading in subway and pavement design. Highway traffic data should be collected and analyzed. Now we study traffic data. Generally speaking, the vehicle weight is di distributed onto axles, then onto tires, and then onto pavements. In order to bed and sand the traffic loading, it is necessary to learn Traffic data, including vehicle axles, wheel tires, vehicle types, traffic volume. We start from vehicle axle. They are categorized according to axle spacing and the number of tires. When the spacing is between the two adjacent axles, it's more than three meter. They are considered as separate. The separate axles is called the single axle. When the spacing of the two adjacent axles is less than three meter, those two axles are combined into an integrated axle and share the same suspension system. This integrated axle is called the tandem axle when the spacing among the three axles are less than three meters. Those three axles are combined into an integrated axle and share the same suspension system. The integrated axle is called trader axle. On each side of the axle may have one or two tiers. If only one tier on each side, this axle is single tier. While if there are two tiers on each side, the axle is on zero tiers. Combining the two variables above, axle types may be single axle on single tiers, single axle on zero tiers, tandem axle on single tiers, tandem axle on zero tiers, tandem axle on single tiers, tandem axle on zero tiers. In the National Asphalt Payment Design Specification, there are seven types of axles. Type 1 and 2 are single axles. 3, 4 and 5 are tandem axles. 6 and 7 are tandem axles. Vehicles have different types and carry different cargoes or passengers. As a result, axle weights are various. In auto protect roads from excessive stress induced by the wheel load, the maximum permanent axle loads are 100 kN for single axles, 100 or 180 kN for tandem axles. 120 or 220 kN for trader axle. The total weight of the trucks is 400 kN in maximum. 
evidently, compared with the USA and the European countries, China has the similar Marxism Pominis X load. The second is about the vehicle wheel or tears, as is well known. Enough the tear inflation pressure is critical for vehicles. The inflation pressure is ranging from 0 0.2 to 1.2 megapascal. It is 0 0.2 to 0 0.3 megapascal for small cars, 0 0.5 to 0.8 for trucks, while it may be over the 1.0 megapascal for overloaded trucks. Obviously, part of the tear inflection pressure is taken by the tear wall, and the other part of the pressure is applied on the pavement. The tear wall usually takes about 10% of the inflection pressure, while the remaining 90% is applied on pavement. Therefore, payment tear interaction pressure Q is about 90% of the inflation pressure, which is independent on the wheel load. In other words, the interaction pressure is only dependent on the tear inflation pressure, since the contact area can be considered constant. The loading area is proportionally increasing with the wheel load. In the national design specification of China, Q is equal to 0.7 megapascal for the sun axles. Part two of this chapter will introduce this sun axle. In the reality, vehicles are running on the road surface one after another. The traffic loading is moving, repeated, and instant load. The traffic loading time is from 0 0.01 second to 0 0.1 second, which is depends on the vehicle speed. Additionally, the loading queue is not constant, driving the wheel moving, but varies with time. As shown in this figure, it may be 10 to 30 percent larger or lower than the average. The ratio of the maximum value of the average value is across the impact coefficient, which is ranging from 1.1 to 1.3. The impact coefficient in this figure is 1.3. Assuming the load on one wheel is P. The equivalent loading area A equals P divided by Q for single axle on single tiers. For the axle on dual tiers, there are two models, model A and model B. For the model A, there are two circular area, and each of the contact area A equals P divided by Q. While for the model B, there are two, there are only one, one circle area. The area A equals 2P divided by Q. Since the loading area is commonly considered as a circular shape, the diameter D or D can be easily calculated with equation 1 or equation 2. The vehicles are classified with two methods. Axle-based classification and service-based classification. We first discuss the axle-based classification. Vehicles are classified based on their axle configurations. In the fig on the left, since the bus has two type 1 axles, it's classified as M. One, one. As shown in the red figure, 
the target front axle is type 1, while the rear axle is type 5. Therefore, it classifies as 1 5. Based on the classification methods, vehicles are classified into 11 types according to the Chinese design specification. Type 1 are vehicles with two axles and four wheels. M11 is the representative. Type 2 are passenger vehicles with two axles and so no less than six wheels. One, two, M and M15 are representative. Type 3 are integrated trucks with two axles and no less than six wheels. M15 is a popular representative. Type 4 are integrated trucks with the three axles. M15 is a popular representative. Type 5 are integrated trucks with four axles. The front axle is a single axle. M17 is representative. Type 6 are integrated trucks with four axles. The front axle is two single axles. M112, M115, and M117 are the representatives. Type 7, 8, 9 and 10 are semi trailer trucks, while the type 11 are trailer trucks. Their representatives are shown in the table. The other classification method is surface based classification. Vehicles are classified based on their surface. They include in passenger vehicles and trucks. Passenger vehicles may be small cars, medium and large public passenger vehicles. Most of the passenger vehicles are type 1 or type 2 vehicles. Trucks are further divided into integrated trucks, type 3, 4, 5, and 6. Semi-trailer trucks, type 7, 8, 9, and 10. And trailer trucks, Type 11. Traffic volume is the measure of the vehicle. Passing in specific roads cross section in given time period. In payment engineering, there are three key terms for quantified traffic volume. The first is annual average daily tra traffic. It is the total traffic flow of one year divided by 365. The second is annual average daily truck traffic. It is the total truck traffic flow of one year divided by 365. Truck traffic is referred to the truck traffic excluding type 1 vehicles. The third one is the vehicle classification factor, VCDF. It is a percentage which a certain vehicle type takes among the total traffic flow. It is an example. Diamond traces the relation of those, those three concepts, giving AADT equal to 6,000, VCDF Y equals 40%, VCDF5 is 10%, determine AADTT and AADT5. Since the VCDF1 is 40%, the truck traffic takes the remaining 60% of the entire traffic flow. The total traffic flow is AADT equals 6,000. Therefore, the AADTT equals 6,000 times 1 minus 40% equals 
3,600. VCDF5 is 10% means that the type 5 vehicle takes 10% of ADT. Therefore, AADT5 equals 6,000 times 10% equals 600. Okay, that's all for today's lecture. I appreciate your listening and see you next time.